All right, I'm going to start soon. Hello and welcome to Cosmic Dream Sanctuary Study and Practice Group. Tonight is uh, February 2nd, 2022. Um, this is the first of a series of study and practice groups tonight. This is about uh, an introduction to the Dream and Hypnosis Study Group series. So welcome. So I invite you now to come into presence that can be coming into your body, um, welcoming you into this space. Um, I will <clears throat> just introduce Cosmic Dream Sanctuary, uh, and then uh, we'll go into the subject matter. So Cosmic Dream Sanctuary is an ecumenical interfaith and open community of meditation, contemplation, and fellowship. The reading, the study, and the meditation is live streamed on you, YouTube, Facebook, and Zoom. Then you're invited to discussion afterwards on Zoom. You can get more information by going to the website, cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash group. <clears throat> we, you are God dreaming you. So we use meditation, reading, contemplation, and fellowship to develop ourselves so that we can embody greater peace, love, and unity consciousness here and now on earth for the benefit of all beings. We acknowledge the reality of the community of non-physical, celestial, angelic, extraterrestrial, elemental, and spirit beings as the many dream characters in the mind of God, which is your highest and deepest self. This uh, group is offered in the tradition of mystic Christianity, Mahayana Buddhism, dream studies, CE5, quantum healing, and Western liberal arts. This group is ministered by me, Daniel Rekshan. I hold a bachelor's degree from St. John's College the Western Liberal Arts Master's Degree in East-West Psychology from California Institute of Integral Studies. I hold a certificate in hypnotherapy from depth hypnosis uh, practitioners and a certificate in beyond quantum healing as well as being ordained in, as, as a minister in the Universal Life Church. <clears throat> How this works. So at 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time, there is a lecture and a guided meditation this is a live stream to uh, YouTube and Facebook, as well as Zoom. Then around 5.45 to about 6.30, we will have a sharing circle and a discussion. It is on Zoom, but will not be recorded. So to join the group, you can find the URL at our website, cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash groups. So you go to that website, cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash groups, and you click on a button that says join the discussion group, and that'll bring up the Zoom room. So. <clears throat> the terms of this study, so I want to outline what sort of study we're going to do and what sort of practice, since we are going to be practicing meditation and uh, self-hypnosis together. So this course is explorative 
It is not definitive. It is focused on the psycho-spiritual and imaginal level. Um, any of the hypnosis that is offered is a training in self-hypnosis. It is not a therapy, a treatment, or an intervention for any physical or mental experience or health. And all experiences in hypnosis and guided meditation arise from the imaginal and psycho-spiritual aspects of your mind and therefore must be interpreted like a dream and not as evidence for historical events. So this is the first evening of a series of uh, study and practice groups uh, to explore uh, hypnosis and dream um, as a way of knowledge, as a way of development. <clears throat> uh, we will cover the topics of suggestion hypnosis, which is dealing with behavior change, relating with a higher self and with inner guidance, so that's connecting in with yourself for the purpose of deepening your energy connections, po being powerful in your body and mind, or getting guidance from within. This is really tuning into your own intuition. We'll cover regression hypnosis, as well as hypnosis to assist in discovering soul origins and purpose, um, finally. And also we'll cover soul integration that can be dealing with traumatic events in the past and really integrating the different aspects of ourselves. Um, we will cover missing time regression. So this is a very popular mode of regression in the UFO contact field. So we'll deal with uh, that. We'll talk about dream re-entry. So this is the capacity to call up a dream, re-enter into it. Um, dream interpretation. This is finding healing insight or some sort of transformation guidance within your dreams. So this can be dealing with recurrent dreams. This can be uncovering dream memories um, and dream meaning. We'll also talk about dream incubation. This is uh, setting up situations where you will uh, dream up a solution to a problem or you might even set the intention to become lucid in your dreams. Another uh, in the series is entity communication. So this can be in terms of how to use the hypnotic or dreamlike trance states to have communication with entities. These might be non-physical, extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial, internal, whatever. Um, and without, uh, um, without talking about resolving entity attachments, any course of hypnosis would not be complete. So resolving entity attachments deals with how to deal with those entities that are negative, that are presenting challenges or things like that. This is sometimes is seen as something like exorcism. This is seen as something like dealing with uh, departed spirits, psychopomp work, things like that. We'll have a session on remote viewing. This is using psychical perception to learn about the world we're in and also trans channeling. So that's a lot of topics that we will cover. These are topics that I'm very interested in that I see being used, um, but we will do so from a, a point of view of inquiry. So what are these things? How, where is the source of uh, these practices? What does it mean to engage in these practices? And you will have an experience of each of these types of practices. So stay tuned as we develop. Um, once a week, we will be offering uh, sessions on these. So this session is uh, all about an introduction to dream and hypnosis. We will look at some definitions of hypnosis and dream, um, as well as gnosis. We, I will talk about um, my experience getting trained in different modalities. Then I'll share a guided meditation and invite us to a sharing circle and discussion group. So, um, <clears throat> thank you for being here. Uh, I wanted to talk about why I am opening up this space of study and practice, the kind of greater context we're in, um, and then uh, move on. Uh, so. The introduction to dream and hypnosis. The reason why I'm opening this space here and now is because I had a great time last fall working with the John D. study group. Um, I worked with uh, about 15 people over the course of nine weeks to really dive into the works of Dr. John D. 
Enochian vision magic, um, ceremonial magic, and this sort of hermetic worldview. Um, so we spent about nine weeks exploring that together. It was a really beautiful time. Um, and we covered a lot of material. So I had some learnings about how to relate with a group um, and wanted to create a space that is drop-in. So you don't have to do anything. In the Jandi study group, I um, invited you to read something like six books a week, something like that. It was a lot of reading. Um, and then I ended up summarizing and some people, uh, whoever was re well read in that, uh, the book that we were talking about would summarize it. Um, we'd have an experience and we'd talk about it. And those, those courses, the, those sessions were about two and a half hours long, which um, was wonderful, but also felt very long. So in this offering, I really uh, want to cultivate a sense of drop-in space, a space where you can tune in to a recording that's really focused on the communication of this material and also provides you with a way to use self-hypnosis, guided meditation to tune in to what we're talking about. And then if you want to, you can participate in the Zoom group, but that's really not a requirement. Um, and so all of these will be offered on the, um, the recordings will be offered through the Cosmic Dream Sanctuary Facebook page, as well as the Cosmic Dream Sanctuary YouTube channel. <clears throat> Um, that uh, study group uh, with John D also led me to working with the Enochian vision magic rituals. This is a very complex and dreamlike and uh, almost hypnotic uh, experience. I saw Dr. John D as something like a proto-hypnotist. He, he was a 16th century scholar and magician and uh, advisor to the Queen Elizabeth and um, he worked with another man, uh, an alchemist and a, a psychic named Edward Kelly, and they had a sort of channeling session. It read very much like um, the trans transcriptions of hypnosis sessions you might work with in terms of extraterrestrial contact. So that's why I was looking into it. That, uh, that produced, uh, the ritual produced um, a lot of material, actually. I recorded my visions. Um, it's something like hypnotic visionary experience. They're on a, a YouTube playlist on the YouTube channel. It's called the Book of Galactic Light. You can tune into that and see that. But that really was a sense of communication it, with the an angels, actually. It was reaching out to celestial beings and angelic forces, and they, they really reached back and kind of communicated in the way that we communicate with entities in the hypnosis experience. So We'll get into that a little bit later, but the really the communication was a deep invitation on the part of these angelic beings, on the part of earth consciousness, on the part of extraterrestrial consciousness. They say, uh, dear humans, come on, let's, uh, let's work together. Let's engage in community and communion and get to know each other. We'll, they, they say they're willing to help us out in terms of our challenges here and now in society. And so this space is really offered as a way to practice the means of engaging with that deeper reality, uh, that deeper community of beings that surround us. In fact, we do see that they're very psychic, very communicative, and trance states. So this series is really providing a framework, um, both in terms of experience, but also in terms of the history of these practices, where they come from, what are the definitions. So and the, finally, the third thing I want to talk about um, as to why I'm opening the space up of the Dream and Hypnosis series is um, last, last year I was asked by Ray Hernandez of uh, CCRI and the free organization who put together the book Beyond UFOs. Um, he asked me to write a chapter on lucid dreams as a contact modality. So um, their organization did a statistical study of about four and a half thousand contactees who consciously remembered extraterrestrial um, contact, either through something like abduction phenomena or UFO sightings. Um, and they, they really came to the conclusion it's, it's overwhelmingly positive, although there are some negative experiences. And uh, it overwhelmingly points to the sense that Consciousness is primary in this uh, situation. 
one of the challenges they had was uh, in terms of bringing together information was that a lot of contact experiences, in fact, happen through dream or bedtime experience. So it's really hard to figure out, is this a dream? Is this not? Um, and then likewise, a lot of the memories and the communication and testimony we have about extraterrestrial contact phenomena happens through uh, hypnotic regression. And so how do you how do you scientifically study dreams and hypnosis, right? So that's what, how, what, what do we do with that testimony of ET contact um, from dream memory or hypnosis memory? Is it real? Is it not? How do we interpret it? So this is a course to really dive into what dream is, what hypnosis is, so that perhaps we can bring in uh, testimony or discover a framework for engaging with dream and uh, dream memory and hypno hypnosis experience as a testimony. Um, so really elevating a sense of uh, awareness around these things. Um, and of course, dreams and hypnosis, uh, dreams are very important. We can see them as messages from our deeper self sent for the purpose of healing, insight, and transformation. Really, that's why I am working with dreams and hypnosis is their capacity to bring us into alignment with our deeper wisdom, right? The deeper health, the enlightened aspects of ourselves, we can really access that. We're sent messages uh, that are beautiful um, every night if we want to tune into it that can actually lead to healing insight and transformation. Um, and so that's why I study dreams. That's why this space is opened um, so let's uh, move on to uh, definitions. We'll do, I'll do some readings here, and then we will uh, go into an experience of uh, self-hypnosis, a very general experience of self-hypnosis. All right, so the definition of hypnosis, this is a formal definition of hypnosis from Division 30 of the APA. Um, I offer this as a way of establishing the definition of the cultural norm, the uh, APA, American Psychological Association. It is uh, very problematic to look to the APA for uh, holistic psycho-spiritual understandings because uh, oftentimes uh, their interest seems to me to be uh, somewhat um, institutional and shares the same problems that many of our institutions have in that they are ultimately uh, geared towards, I don't know, profit or some other such thing, profit and war, um, essentially. And so um, this is simply a way of grounding ourselves in the cultural understanding of what hypnosis is, and then we'll go into the deeper um, traditions. So hypnosis typically involves an introduction to the procedure during which the subject is told that suggestions for imaginative experiences will be presented. The hypnotic induction is, extended, is an extended initial suggestion for using one's imagination and may contain further elaborations of the introduction. A hypnotic procedure is used to encourage and evaluate responses to suggestions. When using hypnosis, one person, the subject, is guided by another the hypnotist, to respond to suggestions for changes in subjective experience, alterations in perception, sensation, emotion, thought, or behavior. Persons can also learn self-hypnosis, which is the act of administering hypnotic procedures on one's own. If the subject responds to hypnotic suggestions, it is generally inferred that hypnosis has been induced. Many believe that hypnotic responses and experiences are characteristics of a hypnotic state, while some think that it is not necessary to use the word hypnosis as a part of hypnotic induction, others view it as essential. All right, <clears throat> so now talking about etymology, I found this out recently. Um, the etymology of dream points to music and joy from Old English, right? But it also has uh, um, roots in the Proto Indo European. Uh, to related to deceive, injure, and damage. Um, we also have a sense from Old Saxon of bustle, revel, reverie, jubilation. 
uh, from Old Norse of dream. Um, and then there's also some associations with specter and apparitions uh, and deception and uh, illusion. So there's two sides to this, um, the etymology of dream, and that is uh, joyful music. And then the other side is some, some sense of deception or illusion. Um, <clears throat> and we'll also see, you know, there's a sense of duality in the in all of the definitions here. It's one of the more uh, delightful and interesting aspects of both dream and hypnosis. So uh, the etymology of hypnosis, I frequently like to say it sounds like, or it comes from hypnosis, sleep knowledge, but it actually is derived from hip. Hypno, which does refer to sleep, and osis, which refers to the state or condition of. So that's uh, the state or condition of sleeping. Um, but it is really interesting uh, to note the sound similarity. So this is an association with the word gnosis. Um, gnosis is uh, commonly understood to be related to the Gnostics, um, which is uh, a very beautiful expression of mystic Christianity and one of the um, theological foundations on which Cosmic Dream Sanctuary is offered. So uh, gnosis comes from the ancient Greek word gnosis, meaning knowledge. Um, Gnosticism is an eminent form of knowledge or transcend transcendental insight. Um, it's a, the act or the process of knowing. And there's also a an occult quality, meaning an altered state of awareness in which the will is magically effective. Great. So we are moving on to a quote by James uh, Braid. James Braid is often credited to be the father of hypnosis or modern hypnosis. It appears that he is the first one to coin the term hypnosis. So here he is describing uh, this sort of uh, dual quality of definition or the hard to pin down aspect of the word hypnosis. Strictly speaking, the word hypnotism should be reserved for only those patients who actually fall into a state of sleep and who forget upon awakening that all, all that occurred during this state. When this is lacking, it is a question merely of reverie or dreaming. It would therefore be opposite to establish a terminology characterizing these modifications which result from the hypnotic processes. Indeed, with regard to those conditions resistant to ordinary medication and suitable for cure by hypnotism, hardly one patient in ten arrives at the unconscious stage of sleep, at least for the whole duration of the process. The word hypnotism can then lead them into error and make them believe that they do not benefit in any ways from a process of which the characteristic and obvious effects do not appear to be those that the name, i.e. hypnotic sleep, indicates. So again, this is sort of pointing to a sense that the hypnotist state, so James Braid actually was a, a, he is a physician and looked to uh, hypnotism to assist that work. And so uh, describing the sense of falling asleep and then um, not necessarily uh, achieving the state of deep sleep and forgetting what happened, but uh, having a state of dreaming sort of induced um, here he's pointing to the fact that it's still beneficial, so maybe we should use a different word than hypnotism. Unfortunately, that word has stuck around, and so um, we will use that um, in the course of this study. <clears throat> and now I'd love to take a few moments to introduce the three uh, hypnosis and dream modalities I use in my practice. Um, I was first trained in depth hypnosis um, by, uh, by the um, ISA, who, who founded um, depth hypnosis, and we'll learn about that. Um, I was also trained in uh, beyond quantum healing, the, and then I will also refer to the Asclepian rituals. So depth hypnosis here, uh, depth hypnosis is a highly effective therapeutic model that helps people work through issues quickly and gain long-lasting results. It is a rapid path of transformation and provides an opportunity to achieve profound and long-lasting results on a spiritual, emotional, and physical level. By synthesizing key principles of shamanism, Buddhism, hypnotherapy, and transpersonal psychology, 
Depth hypnosis brings the ancient healing wisdom of many cultures to the unique imbalances of contemporary society. Depth hypnosis expands the practice of traditional hypnotherapy schools by offering more tools for working with clients and for getting to and processing the deeper issues underlying problems such as habits, anxiety, depression, physical illnesses, etc. Depth hypnosis includes training in insight inquiry, parts integration, energy management, navigating client blocking behaviors, alternative altered state practices, including meditation and the shamanic journey, dream interpretation, soul retrieval, power retrieval, and more. Developed by Isa uh, Giassardi, PhD, depth hypnosis does not rely on a diagnosis to understand the client. Recognizing that every person is unique, it, is act- it actively involves the client in the process of discovering what is needed to affect the changes that they are seeking in their life. In this way, the client actively participates in their own healing process. By following current life issues to their source, the client discovers what is needed to help them move beyond their unconscious motivations. Through this process, the client is able to step into a life-affirming relationship with themselves and the world around them. So that was a definition of depth hypnosis put forward by the Depth Hypnosis Practitioners Association. Um, and the website link is depthhypnosispractitioners.com slash depth hypnosis. So I will read about the quantum healing hypnosis technique. This comes from DoloresCannon.com. Dolores Cannon was the founder of QHHT, the quantum healing hypnosis technique. They say it involves inducing an individual into the somnambulistic state of trance through visualization, a state which under ordinary circumstances is experienced only twice daily, the moment just before you become consciously awake and the moment just before you fall asleep. In, it was working with clients specifically in the somnambulistic state and exploring the possibilities that led Dolores to discover that any individual can gain access to experiences of past lives they have lived. It was also exploring with clients in the state that she discovered an infinitely knowledgeable and powerful aspect of each individual that can be contacted and communicated with. That aspect of each individual is often called the higher self and can be seen as the representative of the whole self. So that was a definition of QHHT, Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique, put forward by DoloresCannon.com. And Beyond Quantum Healing is a modality that brings the QHHT practice online. So it's called Beyond Quantum Healing. It's put forward by um, Dolores Cannon's assistant, uh, former assistant and now founder of BQH, that's Candice Craw Goldman, who participated in the John D. study group last fall. Um, so thank you for her. This is a definition that comes from uh, her um, Beyond Quantum Healing. Uh, BQH is Beyond Quantum Healing. Beyond what exactly? Beyond everything, really. Beyond traditional past life regression, beyond step by step hypnosis or formulaic procedures beyond mechanics straight to the heart. BQH is heart-based and focuses upon a creative, energetic approach to assisting clients in self-healing. BQH is a consciousness exploration modality for self-healing and spiritual growth. It uses elements of hypnosis, but focuses more upon intention, energy, intuition, and heart. Simply put, Humans are different now than they were a handful of years ago. Our bodies, our sense of time, our intuition, our energy, and the very way we move through the world is completely different today than just than just it was even a few months ago. BQH sessions are heart-based, open-minded, and open-ended, and above all, flexible. And alchemical processes, energy alignments, intention decrees proceed, bringing the client into a relaxed state to explore consciousness. Any concern one might have can benefit from BQH, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual. So that's a definition of quantum, beyond quantum healing put forth by the founder of BQH, Candice Craw Goldman. And so uh, the third modality I would offer is the Asclepian rituals. Um, I 
describe uh, those rituals on my website, cosmicdreamsanctuary.org, and I'll simply read those now for you to um, experience. And the Sclepion is an ancient temple dedicated to the healing dream god Asclepius, who you might recognize through his symbol of the snake spiraling up a staff. We understand that gods and goddesses, while fully capable of being and acting in the waking world, express deep aspects of ourselves. If you needed healing, insight, or transformation in the ancient world, you might visit an Asclepion. The temples lived on holy sites with strong energies, like the crossing of ley lines or other potent places. Testimonies from those healed in the form of art or written word filled these temples. You might see images of Asclepius as a strong man holding a staff, or you might encounter snakes or dogs, which are his sacred animals because he is known to shapeshift into their forms to administer healing. You would listen, you would be received by a priest who listens to your story, dreams, or supplications. The priest would invite you to purify through a ritual cleansing like a bath, then to have a dream within the sacred sanctuary space. You might then have a dream that somehow is the accomplishment of your supplications. Sometimes the dream was clear, like that Asclepius visited you and provided you medicine and then you were healed. Sometimes the dream was less clear and you'd speak with a priest who would help you interpret it. All dreams required action, often in the form of a thank offering, such as art or testimony for the temple walls. The consciousness, energy, and power of the ancient Greek god called Asclepius is alive and well in the world today. I actively work with th this energy in my own life and my own dream work with others. That's why I consider the space of our work together to be a sacred temple of dreaming, healing, and myself to be a priest of Asclepius. When we understand that our waking life is like a dream, then we can see that a Zoom call can be as sacred as a temple and just as potent to invite the miracle of healing into our lives. So you can read more of that uh, discussion of the Asclepian rituals um, put forth on my website, cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash about. I'd love to <clears throat> introduce um, Asclepius a little bit more from the time of uh, when he was active in the world and uh, Asclepian temples were uh, open and, and alive and well. So this is a hymn from the Homeric hymns, uh, hymn number 16 to Asclepius. I begin to sing of Asclepius, son of Apollo and healer of sickness. In the Dacian plain, fair Coronis, daughter of King Phalagius, bear him a great joy to men, a soother of cruel pangs. And so hail to you, Lord, in my song I make my prayer to thee. So you'll see Asclepius here. I have an image of Asclepius from one of his more famous Asclepions in Apidorus, um, which has a lot of inscriptions from which we actually know of the Asclepian rituals. And this is a figure of a strong Older man, bearded with a head, uh, wearing a toga. So this this sculpture once stood in the um, <clears throat> Asclepion at Epidorus, and uh, supplicants would look upon it. Right. So they actually say that looking upon one of these actually communicates some of the energies of Asclepius and can bring healing insight and transformation in your dream life. So I invite you to uh, zoom in and see and open yourself up to this image of Asclepius, who was the healing dream god in ancient Greek times. And you can see his face here. Uh, it's bearded. He's got mid-length curly hair. His chair, chest is bare, but he's wearing this toga that wraps around him. It's a mar marble sculpture. And on his left hand, he is cradling a staff which reaches up from the ground to about his chest. And you can see this sort of large snake spiraling up. And that sense of the, this, this symbol of the staff and the snake is sometimes called the caduceus. It is sometimes seen to represent the kundalini, which is a serpentine energy at the base of the spine, actually spiral up the uh, spine. And so this is a representation of both a perfected 
energy form in the human body, but also a representation of a physical Greek god. And you might actually see this image in dreams, and knowing that it, he is a shapeshifter, you might see him as a snake or as a dog. So once again, this is an image of the Greek god Asclepius, um, and the sculpture comes from one of his uh, healing temples in ancient Greek, Greece. <clears throat> Here is a um, Orphic hymn to Asclepius, uh, hymn number 67. Great Asclepius, skill, skilled to heal mankind, a ru ruling paean and physician kind, whose arts medicinal can alone assuage disease dire and stop their dreadful rage. Strong, lenient God, regard my supplicant prayer. Bring gentle health adorned with lovely hair. Convey the means of mitigating pain and raging deadly pestilence restrain. O power all flourishing, abundant bright, Apollo's honored offspring, God of light. Husband of blameless health, the constant foe of dread disease, the minister of woe. Come, blessed Savior, and my health defend, and to my life afford a prosperous end. So with that, we will shift into our um, meditation experience. This is the practice component of the study and practice group. So we did a lot of study of the um, definition of hypnosis, definition of dream, and also dived into uh, the three modalities I'm trained or experienced in, depth hypnosis, beyond quantum healing, and the Asclepian rituals, which is something I've studied and worked with in terms of working with the uh, archetypal energies, let's say, of uh, Asclepius and dream work. So I'm going to offer the basic pattern I use based on those trainings with myself and with others. So this is using a hypnotic suggestion to invite a sort of state of relaxation. And the, this basic pattern is what I go through every single time I do a dream induction, uh, a hypnosis session, or anything like that. I make sure that all of these aspects are hit. And so I'm just going to briefly talk about them as a way of introducing the nature of our practices together and then we'll have an experience where I'll guide you through it. So the first step in the basic pattern I use is to set an intention. So what is the intention? Well, generally it is to have a dreamlike experience, a visionary experience, for the purpose of healing, insight, and transformation, so that we can embody peace, love, and unity consciousness here and now on Earth for the benefit of ourselves and those around us, according to the principle of non-harm and the cosmic law of one that respects the free will of each individual. So that's a little bit of a mouthful, but it is a generic intention that is actually very effective because it uses uh, the human uh, capacities for goodness to be of service to others. It calls on the principle of non-harm, meaning I don't want any harm to come from this, and it it invites a deeper embodiment of peace, love, and unity consciousness. So that's something that most people can really get behind. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, we might have a specific intention that we will set, um, and we, we might contemplate that. Oftentimes it is simply to receive a message or a gift or a communication or a healing, something like that. It might be to discover knowledge. And, and generally, the setting of the intention in relates to the type of hypnosis or experience we're doing. So missing time regression might have a slightly different intention than, say, a parts integration experience, something like that. So after setting the intention, we invoke the higher self. The higher self or the highest self is that part that Dolores Cannon said is infinitely connected to wisdom, that's, that sort of thing. This is the um, representative of Source consciousness, it is the source of the infinitely abundant uh, energy and love and joy that's present in the world when we see ourselves as enlightened activity. This is a Buddhist kind of understanding as well. <clears throat> so this higher self is the summation of the 
uh, subconscious, conscious, and superconscious mind. It's everything all at once, that sort of thing. After invocating the higher self, which is really just, I, I often do that through visualizing white light, um, we go through a process of grounding, and that's intentionally connecting with the earth. That's letting go. Um, so we, we connect with the earth, and then we let go of anything that doesn't serve us. So that's like clearing the body. You're grounded. You're cleared of things. Um, then I invite a process of energizing, so drawing in energy. And in all of this work, right, there is a sense of a suggestion. So we suggest these things, and you might do these things. And knowing that really the conscious mind is only a sliver of what the experience is, we can just sort of receive these intentions and it sort of happens, right? So um, I invite energy to come up in the body and you, you'll lo and behold feel some sort of energy moving in your experience. After that, um, I go through a process of inviting uh, a sense of being protected. And so this might be oftentimes in the form of a sphere of white light surrounding you. So something that will keep you safe, serve as a boundary between your inside and outside world, between that will reject negative experiences and invite positive experiences, something like that. Um, through that uh, sense is also inviting a sense of connection with all the relations, the guides, teachers, allies, ancestors, all those beings who are wise and well, who are our relations and here to be of assistance because lo and behold, it turns out there's many aspects of ourselves and many connections we have in the greater community that surrounds us who can assist us in this work. So we invite connection with those. This might be your spirit guides, angels, whatever. Um, <clears throat> after that, there's a sense of inviting harmonization. So we are now cleared, grounded, protected, connected with all these beings, right? All these different aspects, ultimately, of ourselves. And we invite them to harmonize with us, to really entrain our fields, into greater presence with them. At that point, we express the intention in some way, shape, or form, uh, or invite the intention to unfold. So that's really in this now sacred space that we've created of, of this sort of dream, gnosis, sleep, knowledge thing, of this trance, of this altered state of consciousness, of this connection with divinity, right? Um, <clears throat> we then can express our intention after the intention is expressed, we'll observe the experience, explore the experience. And this is really where the heart of the matter is. This is, the, this is what a lot of people will record in terms of their hypnosis session, is this experience. And in the hypnosis se session, it is a back and forth, right? There's, uh, you are guided into the experience. I might ask you a question uh, and help you navigate that state if it's a kind of experience like we're having tonight you will just explore your own experience according to very general prompts i offer but you observe the experience because that in some way is the dream response is the message is the response to your intention that you've set out this is the experience of going into the esclapion and encountering the the god of healing and dream, Asclepius. That's what it is. It's, it's sort of going in and having an inner imaginal experience that responds to your intention. Fine. Then we go through a process of integrating that experience, right? So that's inviting it into the conscious life. That's inviting it into the waking consciousness in a way that's kind and effective. And then finally, we close the session. And that's generally done through a sense of uh, gratitude, a sense of commitment to action, a sense of uh, inviting deeper embodiment. So those are all the, that's the basic pattern. I know it ha there were a lot of steps there, and you don't have to keep in mind with all of those. And if you do practice um, self-hypnosis, I invite you to find your own pattern, right? There's going to be a pattern that works for you. Um, and you can use shorthand, oftentimes I'll just say white light for myself, and I, I imagine myself surrounded by white light. So whatever works for you is great, um, but we will go through this basic pattern. Um, the intention really is to encounter an aspect of ourselves that will serve as a guide in uh, working with 
these topics. So um, I again, I will uh, guide you through this, um, and we are about to approach the practice session. So um, as I finish describing this experience, I invite you into a posture of relaxation, a posture of uh, tuning in to yourself. So this might be a sense of sitting down like uh, meditation, right? This might be on a meditation cushion, this might be on a chair, or it might be a posture of laying down, and that's really invited. So you might be reclined or, uh, in a recliner or whatever. So The sense here is to allow your body to get comfortable. So start allowing your body to get comfortable. And you can do that by wiggling, you can do that by establishing a sense of feeling uh, equilibrium in your spine. And I'll invite you to start to tune in to your breath as we approach the practice session of this study and practice group. And the practice here is practicing uh, a hypnotic, a self-hypnosis state. So you can do that simply by listening to my voice and receiving my suggestions, knowing that you will create your own experience that you're in control of your own experience, and that once you have the experience of this basic pattern, you can play and explore with whatever pattern you're enticed to work with. So this is simply an offering of what I do for myself. So again, tuning in to the breath, allowing the breath to flow in and out naturally. You might even imagine it's natural like wind in the trees or waves on an ocean ocean beach, in and out, in and out. And as you breathe, just notice a sense of relaxation following. Breathing in and out, knowing that as you breathe in and out in this mindful way, you are bringing coherence of your mind and body. You cannot do this wrong. Simply pay attention. Simply observe the sensation of breath. And as you do, just set the intention that your body relaxes more and more, deeper and deeper, as you start to sense and feel or imagine the white light surrounding you. This is the white light of your highest self. It connects you with source consciousness whatever that means to you. It connects you with God. If you're a Christian, it connects you with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit, right? But this is the white light of your highest self, whatever that means to you. You might even imagine that this comes from the center of the galaxy and flows through the portal of our sun, and it flows around you and then into the top of your head. And you can sense or feel or imagine that this white light flows from the top of your head all the way down your spine, through your heart, through the base of your spine, to the center of the earth. And you can even imagine that this white light forms a taproot out of the base of your spine and goes into the earth. And then I invite you to invite anything that doesn't serve you now, any sense of distraction, any sense of issue, any sense of pain or attachment, you can let go of by letting the white light take it to the earth. Just remember that the earth receives all sorts of things, like compost, like poop, like dead bodies, and returns energy and breaks it down and returns energy to the entire system. So as you let go of everything and as you clear your body in this grounded state, I invite you to energize your body by bringing in the white light now returning from the center of the earth to the base of your spine and let this white light full of new life force energy go to all the places it's needed in your physical, mental, emotional bodies. Let it flow up your spine like that snake of Asclepius goes from the base of the spine where the kundalini resides all the way up the spine. This new energy, life force energy, can snake up the spine, up through the heart, up through the top of the head, 
and emerge out and surround you in this sphere, an egg or a cocoon of white light. You can even imagine that this sphere forms the perfect boundary between the inner and outer world, and it serves to protect you. It serves to protect you, and it serves as an intelligent boundary that lets what serves you, what energizes you, what connects you with source consciousness, it lets those things in, but it reflects anything that would not serve you and your intention. So then now in this state of being very grounded and cleared and energized and protected, I invite you to um, invite all of your relations, all of the aspects of yourself, all of your guides, teachers, allies, ancestors, God, uh, yourself as an ascended master from the future, all of anything like that, anything, any connections you have, all of the wise and well relations who can serve you in your life, and then who actually do want to serve you. These angelic forces want to support you. Your ancestors want you to be successful. These connections you have with the earth want you to live a joyous life because when you live a joyous life, you express such beautiful energies and you can harmonize those around you. And just like you might express joy and love and compassion to all those around you when you feel really healthy and whole, just know that these beings that surround you, these aspects of yourself, want to share healing, insight, and transformation with you. So allow your own experience to harmonize with their love and insight and wisdom and capacity to help you. So just allow yourself to harmonize with that harmonizing with the intelligence and wisdom of the earth. Now in this space of being grounded and cleared, centered, connected and energized, I invite you to remember our intention, which is to have an experience, to have a journey within, to have a dreamlike experience, where you can connect in with a source of guidance. And you can do that simply by starting to imagine that you're in a place in nature where you have felt safe and at peace. This can be a place you've dreamt, a place you imagined, a place you've been. So just imagine yourself there. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. When I reach the number three, you'll be in the presence of this guide. But for now, I just want you to explore what it's like to be in this place in nature. You can do that by tuning into your senses, your inner senses, whatever and however they present to you. So just tuning into the inner sense of seeing, knowing that you might not actually see, but you might have a desire as to whether or not it is light or dark, or you may have an intuition whether or not it's light or dark where you're at. Maybe you know it's sunrise or sunset or nighttime, wherever you are, in this place in nature where you have felt safe and at peace, imagination, a dream, or a memory of a place in nature. And then tune into the sense of sound. What does it sound like? Is it quiet? Is it loud? Do you hear na nature sounds? Do you hear man-made sounds? Are people talking? Is it quiet? Tune, tune into the sense of smell. What does it smell like? Do you smell natural things, artificial things? Do you smell nothing? What does it taste like to be there, right? Finally, what does it feel like within, right? What does it feel like in your body? How are you feeling to be there? How does it feel to be there uh, when you tune into the environment? Is the air moving? Is it, is it still? Is it warm? Is it cold? Is it wet? Is it dry? All of those things. You can explore all of your senses. And as you explore your senses, I, I want you to tune into a final sense of knowing. So this can be intuition, this can be feeling, this can even be imagination. But I want you to tune into the sense of why are you here in this place? Why this place in nature? Why this memory or imagination or dream experience? Why this one? 
And just know. Just feel. Just allow that to come. Wonderful. So now we'll come to three. When I reach the number three, you'll be in the presence of a guide who will help you in this process of exploring hypnosis and dreams for your benefit, for the benefit of others, so that you can embody peace, love, and unity consciousness here and now according to the principle of non-harm and the cosmic law of one. One, knowing that you cannot do this wrong. Two, opening up all your senses, especially that of imagination. And three, stepping into the presence of this guide. You might have an image of this guide as a figure, an animal, a being, an environment, a frequency. However you're experiencing this guide is perfect. And if you're not experiencing anything, now's the time to make something up. It's totally fine. Just make it up. You can't do this wrong. It's even perfect when you make it up. Just explore this guide. What does this guide look like, sound like, feel like, smell like? And I want you to tune into this sense of knowing or communication. Why this guide? You might even ask this guide, why, why you? You might receive the message in a, almost a telepathic communication. You might hear it, you might see it. Something might happen in your environment. Just explore, why this one? Why this guide? And just take a few breaths to allow that communication to come to a natural place of conclusion. We'll have one more question for this guide. What is your message? What is your message for me here and now? What is the message for you here and now? It can be of benefit to help you on your path of understanding hypnosis and dreams. What message does this guide have for you? Just allow this to unfold whatever way is meaningful to you. You might hear it, you might feel it, you might know it, or you might just want to make it up. Now's a really good time to do that. You can't do it wrong. Just take a few more breaths, knowing that you can unpack this message at leisure, knowing that you can come back in contact with this guide using the techniques that you have just practiced. Take a few more breaths here in this state. And then say thank you. Thank you, guide, for your presence, for your message. Thank you, Earth, for supporting us in your consciousness, Earth. Thank you. Thank you, all those beings and aspects of ourselves that have been here and now participating. And then finally, thank yourself for the work of being present here and now, for connecting in with yourself, for your benefit and the benefit of those around you. Thank you. And then just come back to the body, come back to the waking consciousness, knowing that you uh, will remember everything clearly and distinctly. Just come back. And if you shut your eyes, you may open them. Allow a finger or a toe to move if they've settled. Welcome back. You've done very well. <clears throat> so as you come back, I'll just uh, finish up the presentation here and then invite you to discussion. So we are all the one cosmic dreamer. So we're co-creating this journey together, and I'd love to hear more about you and how I can serve you better. You can do so by going to cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash join. 
If you find this group to be valuable, I invite you to consider donating. All of my work is offered by donation. Every contribution is appreciated. And you can select any amount, and you can choose to make a monthly recurrent donation through PayPal on my website at cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash donate. <clears throat> I'm going to promote a few things now. I'm promoting lightnet.org and exometaverse.org. These are communities that I am co-founding. They're under the uh, a nonprofit that is working on both of them. Um, lightnet.org is search conscious search engine for consciousness. This is the uh, place where Nord is becoming. So Nord was the non-ordinary reality database, a collection of first-person reports about um, a lot of these sort of dream and hypnosis experience. We're really um, bringing this forward in, uh, to provide tools to illuminate our own collective intelligence. To learn more, you can go to lightnet.org. Um, and we're really excited because we're working with a development firm. So we'll have a working, an actual working uh, website in uh, two months or three months or so. Um, and uh, also Exo Metaverse, which is uh, same community uh, dedicated to ET contact and using citizen science and collective intelligence to understand that more. There's every other week hangouts on Thursday evenings, so that's an interview with an expert in the field and then communication with people afterwards. That's exometaverse.org. And if you like the hypnosis, if you want to get into more guided meditations, if you want to learn more about dreams, uh, go to dreamwellbewell.com. This is a mobile app that uh, myself as chief dream officer and my brothers, as well as a very gifted team, uh, are putting together. It's a beautiful app. You can use, uh, use it for dream journaling as well as for experiencing these meditations, learning mindfulness meditations, and then uh, having sleep sounds and sleep music. So that's dreamwellbewell.com. Finally, I invite you to envision uh, the space that we call the Starseed Portal Space. My wife and I joke about it being called the ET Birth Ranch, but this is really based in the understanding of the Starseed phenomenon as a way of um, like extraterrestrial or angelic forces or intelligences incarnating into human bodies, right? So this is really comes out of the quantum healing hypnosis tradition and uh, Dolores Cannon and her, um, the people who work in that modality have discovered, right, that you do a past life regression. Lo and behold, some of these people have uh, past lives that aren't on earth. In fact, uh, a lot of people do. And so relating to those energies sometimes requires uh, raising up of frequencies. And so we envision this space to be a physical space to serve as a portal to the fifth density and beyond. If you are curious about what that means, you can join us on Sunday uh, where we talk more about these sorts of things. So if you want to make that space real, just get in touch with me, Daniel at CosmicDreamSanctuary.org, and we'll have a discussion about how we can make this a reality together. Um, there are several ministries that I offer. One is the Fellowship Service Zoom group on Sunday mornings. This is reading, music, uh, contemplation and discussion in the traditions of mystic Christianity, Mahayana Buddhism, and uh, it is more of a more of a sort of uh, experience uh, of contemplation. Uh, there's a variety of readings and there's uh, more discussion. So just like tonight was focused on uh, study and practice, the Sunday experience is a little bit longer, a little bit more uh, more spiritual in nature, let's say, something like that. <clears throat> um, I offer spiritual counseling, hypnosis, and dream services on a one-time and ongoing basis. You can learn more at cosmicdreamsanctuary.org slash sessions. This is a donation, so it's a sliding scale from zero to the market rate or beyond, and so that's a really good way to connect with yourself and experience the healing insight and transformation that is possible through dreams and hypnosis. So finally, with that, I will invite you to uh, join uh, our Zoom discussion. We'll have a sharing circle and uh, a discussion about the topic at hand, which is the uh, introduction to hypnosis and dreams. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate 
that uh, you're connecting with yourself through dreams and hypnosis. It's a very beautiful thing. It's a very potent thing for you to be doing for yourself and for the world. So thank you, and I look forward to discussing this with you. Once again, you can get to the Zoom URL um, if you're tuning in live at cosmicdreamsanctuary.org group. And with that, 